Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part three, or part two and a half, as you will, of the second podcast with Raven Wolfgar on Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role playing. As mentioned at the end of the previous podcast, due to the length, I had to cut it in two. So, welcome back. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for watching part one, and let's continue where we left off. back some households chores needed to be done some just a, a cat needing to be fed and uh well i kind of need another bottle of water so <laughs> mouth's getting a little dry big bubba and a bottle of water yeah make no mistake that cat is savage oh yeah he will kill an entire party <laughs> <laughs> well that's why you uh why you needed the barbarian right well, I don't even know that the barbarian stands up to him very well. He uh, he had a tendency to knock him completely from the gaming table one day, sir. <laughs> barbarian v. Bub. Hmm. Yeah, uh, and barbarian <laughs> lost. Oh dear. Oh. Yeah, barbarian lost that one. Uh, but yeah, the uh, going back to the dark tower thing. Uh, when Goodman Games, I'll, I'll give you a, a bit of a juxtaposition here. So, mm -hmm. uh, Goodman Games takes a classic module like the temple of elemental evil or the dark tower or um you know something like that and they under the open gaming license they take this thing this adventure and what they do is they take the the adaptation for the first edition or second edition rule set out and they mold it for the fifth edition rule set. So now you don't have to go finding the uh, first edition Dungeon Master's Guide, the Player's Handbook, the Monster Manual. You can play with the current books you have. The thing is, if you miss these games oh so long ago, like Temple of Elemental Evil, well, now you get to see what it was like, the types of adventures that were played by those who by your predecessors those who came before oh. you and it makes it yeah so you get you get a you get kind of a peek into what it was what dnd &D was like way back then now like the dark the, the tower first coming out. first actual dnd &D when it was developed and being developed and first played so yeah a, 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 look, a look into the past basically yeah, so like, so, like like so many of us wish we we could take right it, it the analogy I give is that um, if you want to play uh, Space Invaders uh, for Atari, uh, it's like getting a game emulator. You know, you're using your, your current computer. Yeah. And now you have a game emulator program on there where you can actually play that old school game and be like, wow, this is what, you know, my parents or my grandparents grew up with. And it, it, it's a real look into that window here's the difference so if wizards of the coast were to take that very setting and republish it we would get a lot of current year stuff in there and of course yeah. the defense is oh if you don't like that you could just take it out okay that's true that's true mm -hmm. but do i really have to spend 50 bucks for that i mean let's just let's let's face a fact if someone doesn't want to spend 10 bucks on a game, they could take all the what little racist crap there is in there out yeah. and spend time trying to fix the uh, lineage <clears throat> of the gods. Why should I spend 50 to support current year politics in my game that was set <sighs> way the hell back? It doesn't make a lot and of sense. Then, right? like, still strip it and They'll it's, have to strip it, still have to hack it. It it doesn't make a lot of sense. No, no. On the other hand, on the other hand, could I do it? Yeah. But the reason that happens is because Wizards of the Coast, they don't bother talking to the original authors at all. 
That's they completely surprise. cut them out of the pro out of the project. That's been one of the complaints that my uh, players like myself and others have had, and it's a legitimate complaint. Seems However, to be a trend nowadays. It seems to be a trend, right? However, Goodman Games, they bring those original writers in. They will interview them. They will post those interviews for you to watch. Mm -hmm. They will they will show them, hey, this is what we're doing with your setting. And nine times out of 10, I'm saying out of 10 because I don't know if there is that one time or not. So we're, we'll ignore that one time out of 10. But nine sure. times out of 10, what they get is, this is amazing. Holy crap, I can't believe this many people wanted my old supplement in their game today. Yeah. And they're so ecstatic that they come on board and whatever input they have is ta really taken to heart and it shows because so many people that I know have purchased those for like fifth edition. They also make it for Dungeon Crawl Classics and uh, the Dark Tower. That was the set I got. Here's another fact that'll blow your mind. Um, Goodman Games, I think, was only asking on Kickstarter for $10,000. They had stretch goals. Mm -hmm. And they blew every one of those stretch goals within the first 24 hours. Well, every yeah, I mean, one of if, them. Jesus. They if put they... new ones. They put new ones out. Yeah. And let me tell you, these new ones, I think, I think they're kind of stretching it out to about like $500,000. They're already at over a quarter million, well <laughs> over a quarter million. Wow. Just to get this game published. And there's so much like I backed physical copies. I really like mm -hmm. there was one I could get physical copy in PDF, but I was like, no, no, no. I want the I'll just I'm good with the physical. Yeah. They have figure, they have little fig miniature sets that you can do as an add-on. I was like, nah, nah, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, I didn't do the add-ons because I was like, okay, this is already gonna cost mm -hmm. My my initial support is going to be like about 115 bucks. I think that's good for three books plus all the all the like that's, stretch goal stuff that's coming with it. That's uh, decent. Is it ever? Now the downside, I won't see that until probably next year. That's fine, as long as they do this right, and I and I get what I'm seeing on that screen. I have absolutely no problem with that. Yeah. Um, another Kickstarter I backed was for fifth edition and guess what made by the same guy, Greg Lambert who oh, created this nice. and the Chronicles of Iris. Here's the difference. The Chronicles of Iris, um, this one, I call it kid friendly because a, a parent could put the Chronicles of Iris on the table mm -hmm. and here's rat folk. Here's this, here's that it's set in this very high fantasy world. Yeah, but the Chronicles of Iris, the doom that came to Astrius, is more brutal sword and sorcery. So this is like, we'll say this is, um, <clears throat> we'll say this is Dungeons and Dragons meets the Secret of Nim. Okay. The doom that came to Astrius is more like Conan the Barbarian. Oh, that's quite a difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and let me tell you something. When I saw the trailer for that, I knew exactly what to think of it, and it was back that some bitch, you know. Yeah, no, but that's so, that's the thing with those um, with those kickstarters and them just you know blowing past those goals. Like it's it's another example. It's 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 more proof of um, of people not wanting all that, you know, modern political woke. <laughs> stuff like we just we want to just play games and have have fun we want to have fun yeah that's why yeah I, that's why i bought mutant crawl classics because i was like this looks like so much damn fun and, and when the, i the older when I writers it, sorry go ahead you know, when, when i bought it i immediately started looking through the pdfs i started looking at uh, videos on youtube i started talking with some people who have it and haven't had the opportunity to play it yet mm -hmm. and people who have it and have had the opportunity to play it and what they described to me i was like dude 
this sounds like so much damn fun. Like, this is not a game you take super seriously. This is a game that you actually get in and you play and whatever happens just happens. Everybody's going to have at least something of a laugh around that yeah. table. I can't think of a I can't think of a better way to spend time with your friends. I mean, if you can't, I mean, maybe, maybe beers, you know, but <laughs> but um, beers, like there, beers and there games. are just games that take themselves too seriously, and this wasn't yeah. one of them. And I was like, no, but I love that. Let me get that. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like the the older writers or the the original writers or you know the ones who in that mindset, they they get that. I mean, that's why they they wrote it in the first place. You know, for you know the players, for us us players, to have those adventures just to have fun to you know make up stuff and and run with it and that's why i'm so happy to hear that there are still um like just uh, companies too who get that and bring in those people or you know bring them back and because you'll hear that so many you'll hear that so much and, and so many times that like oh i had no idea that you know the stuff i wrote 30 40 years ago that it's still so popular that people still want to you know they still want to play it they still want to read it's it they still, still want to do it, it. Yeah. yeah but that's that's because those are like actually for fun they're not yeah. political they're not woke and as as you said they don't take themselves so damn serious because that's not why you play a game you play exactly. a game to have fun to you know let your mind wander step out step out of your own head for a while you know try exactly. to try to kind of get you know like like the raven code says make time for play you yeah you gotta do that or you're gonna go absolutely ape shit insane i understand why some people snap and it's because they take life way too seriously and it, they don't get in touch with that inner kid quite enough and that's that's probably the best segue i can think to what you called the most dutch thing ever in some bikes hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i mean this is a 25 dollar book it is not that thick i actually read through this yesterday after oh, i got cool. home i pulled i pulled it out of the bag i read through it it was it was so good here like i'm gonna say this i love this as a concept and as a rule system mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's really good um this particular book, uh, the reason I got it was, uh, the reason I just, I was like, I got to go get it. it, especially if it's still there. And I know mm -hmm. I saw it there. I was like, if it's still there, hopefully everybody else missed it because it was the only copy on the shelf. And like, like I missed Genesis. So I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see if it's still there. So I got up kind of early, got myself together, went down, and sure enough, it's still there. And I was like, well, awesome. there's no way I'm leaving it on the shelf. Awesome. And the reason I, the inspiration for getting it was the movie E.T. Um, what, what is E.T. if it's not kids on bikes, you know? Yeah. What, yeah. What is Stranger Things if it's not kids on bikes? You know, there is a Stranger Things version of D&D, &D, but I'm not interested. I'm more interested in the concept where you can kind of throw just about anything into this. And let me, yeah. you know, I'll, um, I'll, I'll kind of get to the good parts here. And I'll I'll come back to um, I'll come back to you know some th there are a few issues ha I have with it, but I'll tell you what I'm not going to worry too much about. It. Again, nothing's. Perfect. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going if, so, if there's something I don't like, I'm going to take it out. And here's here's the uh, synopsis right here, which okay. ought to ought to pique some interest. The door to the to the old house creaks open, the rust on the hinges groaning as you see the dust floating like spores in the air inside. By the faint light of your cheap flashlights, you see the stairs to the upper floor, its railings gnarled and broken like crooked teeth. Their curve makes the stairs seem almost like a hungry grin, and you wonder if their age will support your weight. Still, you must go in. The only question is, who will go in first? Ah... Uh... I mean, imagine you and a group of your friends doing a little urban exploration back in the day, and there's that old abandoned house, and you're like, 
you know, you've heard a rumor that maybe something lurks inside or some some like yeah, that. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of the that concept is just mind blowing and it's awesome. And especially as kids, you know, who is the first to go inside? No, you go inside. No, you. And then you yeah. push someone inside. Hey, Come you on, you weenie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stop shoving. But um, here, what they say is uh, it, it's going to be set in a small town at any point in history before everyone had a video camera in their pocket. So you can set it during the 90s. You can set it during the 80s, the 60s, the 70s, the 40s, if you want to. Uh, it should be probably a place remote enough that the rest of the world just doesn't care about, but close enough that black helicopters can be there within hours. Everyone in the town probably knows everybody else, for better or for worse. People look out for each other, but rumor also travels fast. Ultimately, though, this is all up to you. Now, this is collaborative world building. Here's the uh, real difference. That it doesn't just of... rest on the shoulders. It doesn't rest on my shoulders to create the world that you mm -hmm. guys will play in. It's up to all of us. Kind and of sounds where sounds like the town where my uh, where my mom grew up. Just you know, small town with the you know the flower fields and the the flower farmers and whatever. Everyone knows everyone. I I can I can yeah I can totally imagine it. I can I can let my fantasy and my imagination run. Go ahead. And uh, this is like if you choose to build the world together, you all have to answer. Uh, the following questions to create the location, adapting the number of questions asked as indicated below so that each player is answering the same number of questions. Mm -hmm. So where the adventure takes place, uh, what industry that the location is known for, what the town's famous for, what it's infamous for, what it's what that town's like economically, a notable lo uh, local organization, notable lo uh, notable local landmark, and the school sports team. Okay. All, all th So if I were to set, if I were to set this myself, I'm guys, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm playing, if I'm running a role playing game, I am carving out that time. And guess what? I'm going to make it as easy on me as I can. I'm going to say this, and here's where I'm going to, I'm going to share some like, kind of like personal background here. We're going to set that town in a, we're going to set it in a town called De Quincey, Louisiana. This is a town you can actually look up on Wikipedia. That town is most notable for the railroad and the prison. Its uh, most notable local landmark is the Railroad Museum. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, local organization, the Freemasons. I know, I know where they go. They have a they have a lodge right there in the same building as the post office. Um, okay. School sports team was the De Quincey Tigers. Mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. Economically, my thought on it was it had all of like maybe one or two stoplights. It, it, it can't be exactly, a, it can't exactly be a boom town. You know, everybody who worked either worked for the railroad or, you know, we, we did have a McDonald's and a Burger King and a Popeye's there. That was about as big city <laughs> high school as we got. <laughs> so you're either working you're either working for McDonald's, Burger King, Popeye's. Uh, there was a place called Fosto's, which had the best fried chicken in town, and they were right across the street from Popeye's. I mean, you talk about nuts, man. Fosto Fosto really <laughs> it was like I'm gonna set up my competition right across from you. Hell oh, yeah. Spine, son. <laughs> and they're right next to it. Right next to it is the Dairy Queen. Um, the, believe it or not, the junior high was like located just outside of town, which is kind of a weird place to put it. Yeah. Um, there's all, there was also the Grand Avenue gym that was connected to the uh, junior high at the time, which was just too small. They tore everything but the gym down. I used to go there to watch Mid South wrestling matches. That shit was awesome. Oh yeah, we we talked about that. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it, it's you know, and this is a this is a small town. They are they're known for being a little superstitious. As and I think that's kind of what they're people are. Right, and w when I say superstitious, I mean like if Geraldo Rivera comes on TV and says your your children may be practicing Satanism and they're probably going to believe it. You oh. know, they, they tend to believe stuff like that. 
oh, and that's the, also those, what they're okay. kind of that's also kind of what they're most infamous for. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you this little story. We actually had um, a, we had a corporation called Calgon that wanted to come into town, set up a, a factory. They were mm-hmm. talking all kinds of big benefits to the town, uh, well, you know, decent paying as, jobs. As the big so corporations so do. Mm-hmm. Two brothers uh, investigated them. Just went around and started digging all that they could up on that company. They found that these guys had multiple uh, EPA violations. Oh. And they brought it up at, at several town hall meetings. They got petitions out there. Mm-hmm. They had feet beating street. This is just before the ubiquity of the internet. They had feet beating street. They were out there. They were they were putting flyers up on every light post that they could. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Calgon did not set up shop in that fucking town. They well, were no absolutely shit. kicked the fuck out. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I'd like to say that is what our town is most famous for, is that incident right there. It was really cool. Community but, um, coming together. Oh, taking, yeah. The kicking whole, out the, the big whole, evil corporation. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> you know, if, if they hadn't had so many violations and stuff, and, and they were guilty as hell of it, if they hadn't screwed up where they had been, mm-hmm. this would have been a different story. Calgon would have moved in. People would have had jobs. Things would have been a little different. However, this company had a track record, <laughs> a oh. terrible one. And they were That's like, oh, shame. not not in this fucking backyard bitch get out so that's the kind of setting like the small town from which i came would be perfect for kids on bikes because on a bicycle in under an hour you could get from one end to the other how do i know i did it (laughs) i mean (laughs) of course i could probably walk it in about two or three and how do i know that because i used to take nightly walks so yeah i know a thing or two about this town and you know, that kind of thing. There was there was a lot of that kind of urban exploration we used to do. So just that as a setting resonates with me super hard. Yeah. That as a setting resonates with you super hard because you said the stereotype of getting everywhere on a bike is happens to be true. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I, I showed uh, Keely and um, and Charity, her witchy sister, you know, that uh, Especially, um, like, uh, Keely at first, when she, you know, when she got to know me and I got to know her, like, we all know the stereotypes of, you know, Dutchies on on bikes and, like, they're everywhere and uh, it's a stereotype. I showed them and it's, you know, just average (laughs) city center in um, Harlem, not, not to be confused with Harlem, New York, which, I mean, Harlem is named after Harlem, like our Harlem um bikes everywhere just rows and rows of bikes and like both keely and charity were just mind blown like whoa so it's not just a stereotype no it's not and like with how aggressive we are on the bikes i mean it's it's a meme you know like everyone has to take us into account but you know in a mile we'll have committed three crimes against humanity and four war crimes and violated 10 traffic <laughs> rules and <laughs> that's true by the way yeah. uh, keely can attest to it like even today i had to bring some stuff to uh to goodwill and i mean she heard me and was like i guess it is true Told you it was. <laughs> but, but here's my question. Do you call it sidewalk rage or is it still road rage? <laughs> uh no, it's it's still it's still road rage. Still road but, rage. But on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Two-wheeled road rage. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but uh, trust me, Dutch cyclists were were the worst. Certainly. <laughs> and you know, I mean it's it's a joke, but it's it's also kind of true. Like in Amsterdam, it's kind of like the Tour de France. A lot of people on drugs, on bikes. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd like to bring something else to to a, a little bit of attention here. Uh, the cover here, you'll notice there are no headlights on any of the bikes. No headlights, no tail lights. Yeah. No little saddlebags, nothing. Um, I noticed that on Stranger Things, the scenes at night, here are all these kids in the 80s, and they got these really bright headlights on their bikes. And I'm thinking, was that ever a thing? Because I don't know. Now, if you were a kid that grew up oh. in the 80s and that was a thing, let me know. I, I'm thinking I might have spotted a, a little anachronism there. But I mean, I'm a, I, I'm a 90s kid, and I, I can remember... Um like headlights and taillights, they are a thing. They they are a, um, like our bikes are required to have them, including um, reflectors on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, reflectors we had. We just didn't have uh, headlights or taillights. And as a matter of fact, like the last mountain bike I bought was the first and only mountain bike i ever had headlights and taillights on mountain bikes I didn't usually have, have them those on anything else those detachable lights that um that just work on batteries you know you'll you'll clip them on clip them off or yep. you know if you're if you're going home home from clubbing and you see someone stole your lights you steal someone else's lights um <laughs> oh wow I mean, that's, oh, man. That's, that's how we did it. Like, I can remember so many nights that, <laughs> you know, I, I I went back from like a concert or, or you know, just going out with friends or clubbing or whatever. And like the, the last bus home already left and it was still like two, three hours before the first train close to home oh, wow. went. So, you know, cool. just go to the train station see what idiot left their bike unlocked and it's just this is my bike now oh wow <laughs> y'all y'all straight up stole entire bikes <laughs> oh yeah oh dude oh I, I swear the best bike i ever had had uh it was a um like a racing bike so very light very fast uh very thin you know, yeah, very thin but like I swear, best bike I ever had. Just picked it up from a train like station a somewhere. <laughs> the ironic, <laughs> I mean, the ironic thing is then somebody else stole it from me, but. <laughs> hey. Hey, someone ripped off the thing I ripped off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of pissed about it because I, I liked that bike so much because it was like, it was orange too, like our national color, like. Come on, and then somebody stole it, and I got to pissed about it. Oh, and no. I told my, then I told my parents, and they were like, but you kind of stole that bike, too, well, so why are you pissed about it? Nothing, like, nothing of value was lost here. But I like the bike, yeah, but it wasn't your bike, yeah, but still. <laughs> but I liked it. But that that's, that's really the thing about uh, these RPG settings, is that you can find just about anything that will take you back somewhere, whether it's um, back to your teenage years. For me, that's going to be with like a second edition. Um, mm -hmm. Times that you weren't playing D and D, you were you know riding around with your friends. And like I said, when when, when I was younger, me and my friends, we all had bikes. We we or skateboards or even rollerblades. We just blast yeah. out into the night, no lights whatsoever totally hogging these uh, residential streets, um, you know, really kind of taking up the shoulder of that road. How we survived any of this, I still have no idea. But the great thing about having a bike was this, this was like one of those things. And that's why I love, that's why I love my mountain bikes. This was the type of uh, mode of conveyance that I, I, I didn't have a car yet, wasn't licensed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now, now if I'm being chased down, by idiots on foot well all i got to do is just be faster than them and hey my legs were pretty powerful back then i'd speed oh. off they they'd be trying yeah. to throw things at me and you know maybe something goes whizzing by my head um i do recall one night though out on my mountain bike brand new walkman and we're talking the tape deck oh, uh yeah. brand new headphones 
and apparently one one guy I, I didn't see him i mean the guy was literally in a very dark spot mm. and all i saw was this orange blur come out in front of me i couldn't break fast enough this thing took the it took my handlebars and completely twisted them sideways oh, so now yeah. handlebars are facing this way so's the wheel and i did this my walkman went skipping down the street oh no it, it and then this this elbow here hit pavement i had road rash all over this elbow oh. and uh keys were in my left pocket i fell on those to really deep bruise the shit out of that hip yeah and i was just kind of like laid out stunned for a for a minute and i'm like oh my god why the fuck is my arm burning well <laughs> You know, naturally, all the rest of his friends are like, what the fuck have you done, you idiot? And they're they're running to my aid. One of them literally took this guy and pulled his shirt off of him. And he was he was ready to fight him. And when they got over to me, he took that dude's shirt and wrapped it around my arm. <laughs> oh, dude. I ended up, uh, that night, I ended up, kind of sitting in one of one of their houses watching mm -hmm. desperado and from dust till dawn with them and they treated okay. him like shit all night <laughs> like, <laughs> oh i got no, my they... blood all over his shirt uh, i think i think he's insulted look he's walking around half naked the guys leave him alone jesus fuck <laughs> but the next the very next day is when i surveyed the damage because i, I had to literally carry that thing home yeah and when I got it back home, the very next day I have to go to work. I mm. can't really move, you know, this hip very well. I'm having to really yep. be ginger, you know, gingerly moving. And I looked and the wheel was warped. I just didn't know how bad it was. I had to get to work. Mm -hmm. I managed to get to work. But when I got back on the bike to go home, the tire just went flat. There was no inflating it. The uh -huh. wheel warping was just way too bad. And my dad, uh, now he only had me for a couple of hours before he sent me home. He's like, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, oh yeah, some dude threw a basketball on my front wheel. And he's like, he just gives me this look like, what? What? Unwrap yeah. your arm. And I unwrapped it and he showed him. He's like, Jesus Christ, who the yeah. fuck did this? I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know his name, that's, dude. I that's really the don't. weird thing when you're like, when you're a kid, like just what, what are like, basically major accidents because you know fucking <laughs> road rash or whatever oh yeah it happens oh yeah yeah that happened Dude, <laughs> look at yeah. yourself look at your bike what do uh, you yeah, mean yeah, it's, it it's happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's pretty well fought. now to be fair that bike uh i had it for several years so we've replaced tires we've replaced tubes we've replaced chains no. um uh, we we we've done every kind of major repair to it. That one we were we couldn't find a wheel for it. So uh, mm -hmm. a little bit later on in life, then I picked up. You know, I I bought a mountain bike, same brand, Mongoose baby. I was all about that thing. Nice. Popped a uh, headlight and a tail light on it, a little saddle bag, and mm -hmm. just popped a little multi tool in there for repairs on the fly. And even though I didn't have a group to ride with me anymore, you know, this was still. Oh yeah, I also bought a seat pad because Jesus, that made my ass hurt. But well, um, yeah, the, those those really thin hard saddles. Uh, the, yeah, the ones with you the fight two, on. two cushions about this thick, and they're just constantly pressing in the uh, it's like yeah, the, the like the ones you'll find on uh, on racing bikes. I I know those. Yeah. Oh god, oh, and then they're terrible. Just, yeah, imagine a bumpy road I, I with those. Yeah, and then there are some that are just way too wide, and you can you can feel it while your legs are pumping. It's like, <laughs> is there any? Why why were they so just right when I was a kid? Oh, it's because my ass got fatter. Okay, I got it. Mm. So yeah, I mean, just the memories of being a a kid on a bike. <laughs> yeah, so weird. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I mean, these settings these settings could take you back to just about any point in your in your childhood. They can take you back to just any point in your life where things kind of made sense. And even if they don't, they could take you out of this part of your life where you're looking around and you're like, none of this makes any sense. 
it's it's all completely crazy shit let's pull let's pull out those modified hot wheels and play Gaslands. let's let's um uh, let's let's go let's go make some fucking dungeon tiles and uh play on those let's go and um you know, let me just crack this open and see how far I could take my character on his ship, the uh, the Hyperborean, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. That's that's really where I think RPGs shine over video games. And on top of that, uh, this is also something that's come up before. Uh, but before I get that, remember that thing I said about taking things out? Mm-hmm. Let me uh, just kind of introduce you to that. Um before starting to create your characters, you and the Game Master should address the kinds of things that the players want to see in the game and the things they don't want to see. Okay, that I can kind of understand. Sure, fair um, enough. Okay. If the players would rather give the GM list, they'll each write down the topics they'd like to avoid, and the GM will compile that list anonymously. As with the other method, there shouldn't be a discussion as to why players don't want to address certain topics. Uh, however, do feel free to ask for clarifications. And this is where I'm I'm reading this section and I'm like, uh-oh, oh boy, because there is in here, uh, for example, a group may be comfortable addressing issues of, uh, may be comfortable issuing, uh, addressing issues of race in 1950s suburbia. But if you're, if you're in mind, every, uh, if you're in public, everyone who overhears you might not be. So keep this in mind. Be respectful of anyone who might overhear your game. Okay, yeah, that's that's there. Um, that's okay. But there was something in here that I spotted, and I went, mm. So play your and, game, but like, do mind the people around you who might not. Um, as a matter of fact, I think it's here in character creation. Um, it's, it's an it's an odd rule, but okay. It, it's kind of a weird one, yeah, but like, um, consider this. Like, look at look at Stephen King's It. Now that's a that's, that's a kids on bikes adventure right there, dude. That's where my mind went when you started speaking about the old dusty house mm-hmm. and the, the the creeping up the stairs, like just kind of the um, that I mean, house in, in the in the in the movies. It was a a basement scene with uh, with Georgie, but. Yep. I mean that's that's where my mind went, you know, Stephen King's it. So yeah, and and l- let's take into consideration. I can kind of understand something like this. Mm-hmm. Think of how they handled um I can Beverly, how they handled Beverly's father, where we knew what was going on there. It was we heavily exactly. it was heavily implied, but never really Hev- never, never really shown. overtly and in- addressed right so yeah something like that i could kind of understand sure. but it gets um ah here it is including characters who are abled and, or neuroatypical so if helene's okay. character has been using crutches to get around for most of her life she won't be quite as mobile but her upper body m- might be accordingly stronger if raj is deaf he may have picked up the ability to read lips. Also think about what your character needs to do in response to their difference. If Hannah's on the autism spectrum, she might need time after experiencing sensor, sensory overload before she can focus again. She might have a process that helps her refocus more quickly. So there is that, but I'm thinking, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, here we go. Here yeah, we go. That, uh, that makes sense, but why would you create a character like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, see and here's the thing like for cyberpunk games i do have a disabled character i can play yeah and he you, is you mentioned he's that bitter the, he's uh, sarcastic you mentioned that in the previous a, podcast yeah right he's bitter he's sarcastic but still pretty good at what he does and so that's why people seek him out yeah. but there again does he absolutely have to be completely normal in order to play that character no it's just a limit i placed on that character and kind of a barrier to possibly make him a little better maybe give him a different story arc something like that this way it's not a character that holds the rest of the group back that's Mm -hmm. that's going to be that was my main goal with creating him was yeah he could be kind of that oddball character but he's one that just helps kind of further the story there yeah but it says 
race, ethnicity, gender, and sexuality. Oh, Let me oh. just stop for just a second. Here we go. Okay. I I don't. I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't care how anyone else plays their game. At my table, kids and sex are not going together unless you know if someone pipes up and says they want to play. Like if someone just ripped their character straight from it, I want to play Beverly. Okay, that's fine. I just want to see how you make it your own. Yeah. We will never, ever put in, you know, what dad did to her. We will only kind of make it like a thing where it's like, you know, one day, hey, Beverly, are you okay? No, it's my dad again. Oh, that asshole. You know, something like that. Yeah, like like in the movies, you know, just Im- Im- right. imply it, but never, imply it, out, right. never outright tell what's happening now here is where i think the book gets it just a bit right and the book reinforces my point on this and it's for example dale creates harper a gender queer character who is out of the closet to their friends and family but not to the town at large as with priya's character becky all the players in the gm agree that they're comfortable with dale's ability to portray this character well based on the ground rules they set during which they agree that there would be no slurs related to or mistreatment of the lg BTQIA people, and they agree they aren't going to make Harper's gender identity something that non-player characters really take much note of. The players of GM agree it won't be something that non-player characters address unless Harper brings it up. So I mean, playing that character, it's not a big deal. It's it's just there. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that in Trailer Park Boys. They've got a couple of uh, bisexual characters in there who you know, it, it, that's not that's not really like it's not doing this with it. It's just well, it's there, yeah. and they never really make a big deal of it. That I think okay, that I think is done right. Again, if the care if the player can do it right, fine. That's that's cool. Sure, but there is um. Let's see. I think it was uh ha. Huh. Okay, so there was um. There was something in here about they actually gave a web address to go to the X card, and I went <sighs> X card. What's what's that the, about? Okay, so the X card is, you know, basically basically like it's a sheet or a card mm-hmm. that you can sit there and check off all the <clears throat> things that you don't want in in the game. Oh, and God. at this point, I'm thinking, you know, none of those are really going to be that much of an issue. It's... You know, if you've got, if you watch Stranger Things, they have one black kid in there. They don't make an issue of it. It's the bullies. It's the assholes that do. Yeah. I mean, as, as a kid, those things don't matter. Like, I, exactly. I, I can remember as, as a kid, like my two best friends, Peter and... Eric, uh, so Peter and Eric. Uh, Peter um, is very autistic. He was my best friend. Like we, we also had all kinds of adventures, but more, um, more in his neighborhood. He lived in another, another part of uh, of town, close, but you know, still different enough. Um, Eric lived right around the corner. His dad uh, was Dutch. His mother was, I believe, from Indonesia. So, you know, a mixed culture, mixed race, whatever. Mm-hmm. It was my best friend, you know. We, we played soccer on the streets every day with the, um, the, draining, the drainage on, uh, on each side of the street being like the, um, the goalposts. The, and- the default goal. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and yeah. he like he was so cool because he had like the keeper's gloves and like dove and whatever on like street oh, on, on stone and whatever. <laughs> and uh, I mean, not not like dove, dove, not like you'll see the the professional goalkeepers who like jump he, he two, two meters in the air, just you know, yeah. kind of. 
He, he would lunge, yeah. Yeah, sort of, and I just, like, tried to stop it with my foot and not go into a split at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not all Jean-Claude Van Damme here. No, yeah, no, exactly. But just, you know, just that that trio, a highly autistic dude, a dude whose mom is Indonesian, whose dad is Dutch, and then me, you know, from a more well-off family i guess like speaking of diversity that's diverse enough already but we didn't care we were friends yeah, no, we were best we were best friends we just played and had adventures and eric was the 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 dude with the uh i i just i went around town with or around the neighborhood on our aluminium scooters and just had all kinds of adventures and so and, th and that's that's what i don't get nowadays because they they try to inject it in everything, and, everything make, and make yeah. the, make the kids aware of the differences that they don't even see exactly and th the thing about this is is this game does rely on tropes so you do have to pick like between being the blue collar blue collar worker type which that's that's what my family was so mm. that that's kind of something i could get behind uh there's also the conspiracy theorist there's the bully the brilliant mathlete the brutish jock the funny sidekick um laid black slacker loner weirdo i can definitely uh, i could definitely uh, get behind <laughs> that one here's the thing you can also play an adult in this game so you mm -hmm. can play the overprotective parent uh there's the popular kid the reclusive eccentric so you know maybe maybe the rumor revolves around that, that reclusive eccentric guy uh there's the plastic beauty which we we've seen those uh the scout you know you got you got that kid in the boy scouts he's always yeah. carrying a swiss army knife on him you know, you definitely want him on your side. The young oh, provider, yeah. that's that one kid that had to grow up real fast because parents aren't in the picture. And not only is he going to school, he's got to get brother and sister up, get them to school, get them fed, get them clothed, yeah. go back I mean, at night. He's got to work. It can be fun the, playing with those with those tropes, with those like more kind of stereotype um, characters. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, the, the thing is, and you, you see that in popular media a lot, they immediately try to inject politics in it as well. Yeah, I mean, like, ima imagine for a second where, um, you know, you've got that group of like three or four kids at the door of that house, and, you know, you've got one who's kind of the loner weirdo, you got the mathlete there, and you've got this brutish jock and the, the plastic beauty there. Mm. And now how you get all these disparate, personality types together i don't know but for the sake of this example sure. eventually maybe it's the brutish jock that goes you know out of the way and he uses like a, a gay slur or something like that i can tell you this much i grew up with that word being thrown around at people who weren't even fucking homosexual so mm -hmm. <laughs> i had it thrown around at me a couple times it's just like oh you like that you know it just they belt it out it, that's one of those yeah. things that could have occurred in the past. Maybe it doesn't happen now. It's just, you know, move out of my way, dweeb. You know, I'll go in. Fuck it. You know, and they're like, oh, well, he's going in. Let's just kind of hang back and see what's going on here. Okay. Looks like he's, he's like, hey, see, nothing going on. And then something falls, you know, it scares the hell out of him. Yeah. So, yeah just you're, ah, you're scared him. Your typical scenario, you know, the brutish jock, over overconfident, or at least you oh, know, yeah. and the, portraying you know, to be overconfident, and <laughs> and after after he's already brushed the uh, mathlete out of the way, you know, the mathlete's like, yeah, who's the dweeb now? <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of <laughs> this, this is where yeah. this is where the no harm, no foul play comes in because it's like, oh, you're so you were so tough until like five seconds after that deer head fell off the fucking wall <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 shut up so you'll you'll have you'll have stuff like that those little moments happening now if if the group says hey that that's out you know that you know we're not going to use that word can we use something else no problem i, I don't really have a problem with that you know if sure. it happens once and then it just never happens again okay i'm i'm good with that I'm good with kind of like going with that on the fly, but here's the difference. I'm usually playing with people I trust. 
Mm -hmm. And if we're playing in public, yeah, it's going to be a lot more polite. Just just so we don't start, you know, fucking with the straights. Yeah, po polite, but not PG. Exactly. It's going to be very PG-13 up in there, I think. But uh, yeah, it would be it would be great to see the pla the plastic beauty, you know, looking at this hideous thing, going, ah, uh, you know, like looking at Pennywise, and she's so plastic she can't really formulate terror. She's like, oh, you need a makeover or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or that just shit. like I'm I'm not going into that house. Like this dress cost me two hundred dollars. Like I'm not going to get dirty. You know how much uh, it I am costs to clean getting, this? I am not getting this blouse dirty. You're out of your mind. And then the first doc just reaches out, get in here. <laughs> We're just, all going I in, just okay? Did my nails and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, when she, come, when she comes out of it, now she's dirty and she's crying. She's like, oh, I broke a nail. <laughs> They're all looking at her fault. like, do you realize what we just encountered? You know, that yeah. big everything with teeth from here to texas and you're worried about your fucking nail <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's you know that's fun playing around with those with those stereotypes with those exactly, tropes i yeah. mean they they exist for a reason you'll find them in popular media all the time it's because it works Be hey look at look at look at fast time there's a movie called fast times at ridgemont high it was one of like you will see a very young sean penn in there and he oh. played the he was he was the laid back slacker of the of the group. He he is that stereotype right there. He's that trope. And then you have um you do have a plastic beauty in there. You've got a uh, you've got the one who who kind of pictures himself as this single successful guy. And uh, yeah. you've got all these different types in there, and they're all they're all tropes that somebody out there can relate to. So just, when you've know, got Look at those chick flicks, you know, she's the man and mean girls and whatever. Like it's all stereotypes, nothing but stereotypes in just another stereotypical story, like mean girls, you know, the the I don't know, kind of like the country girl or the small town girl come, you know, moving to the big city because you know, dad had a you know a major career change or a big opportunity or whatever. And and, and even go even now going transitioning from like something modern day to like you know D D or basic fantasy or white box or dcc or whatever mm -hmm. what are they well the the brutus jock is probably going to be your fighter your brilliant mathlete is probably going to be your wizard yeah the uh and you know you've got other ones the blue collar worker is probably going to be that guy who was brewing me like two weeks ago and now finds himself in with this group yeah um the 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 priest of your game is probably going to be your paladin you know because he's yeah. dedicated himself to a faith and now he's he's he could do spells but he can also fight yeah the thief is going to be that loner weirdo that nobody really wants to hang around because well he's weird but so. has has a set of skills that he should not have or a set of skills nobody thinks he should have yeah, for yeah, but for example, do they come in handy at at times when it's needed? You know, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's it. I I am loving this. I'm I'm loving these <laughs> these stories. I, I love doing these these podcasts with you because you know it's it's we've lost so many of that. Just our our imagination, our fantasy and you know well, it's well consider also, this it's also sanitized consider this uh, i've got uh celtic myths and legends right next to norse myth and myths and legends now we could take those two cultures right there the celts and the and the norse their stories were passed down through oral tradition mm -hmm. a lot of the times it was done sitting around a fire this is the earliest form of radio and tv and then as yeah. the children grew older, they then passed those stories on to others. Those stories, you know, they'd start with like this group over here, then this group here, and then they'd start coming together and mixing. And pretty soon, yeah, uh, someone took it upon themselves to say, hey, we need to write these down. 
and they did. Now, instead the of Romans, all of explain. us gathering around a table and telling individual stories, now we're sitting around a table. Now we're cooperatively telling a story about our group here. You know what's happening around that table. This table itself, it's not just it's not just a table anymore. It's it's an entire world. And that world scrolls so that you don't yeah. you don't zoom yeah. out and get too big of a picture, but you're going to see that picture come together over a long like over a series of adventures through a campaign. It's and before a you know it, it's a cave system. It's mm -hmm. it's well, it's a it's a dungeon, it's a desolate desert. It, it's it's a haunted house. It's everything it's a creepy, and anything you, you want it to be. Exactly. And then what you have is you have this sort of new folklore and that new folklore it happens because now we get on the internet we tell each other you know we we don't say this is what i did in this game we say you know this character um th this character got snatched up by a dragon uh he's a barbarian he had about 30 seconds of blood rage and he somehow got word back to his people that, you know, this is it. Yeah. Grab my bag, grab what you need out of it, because I'm not anticipating coming back. And he takes out the dragon midair and both plummet to their death. This is like, and then they in turn find him or, you know, find him dead naturally. And they hold, they hold a funeral for him because it was probably the most dignified way to ever go out. Yeah, you know, on the other hand, there's there are games like Chalt. Chalt is uh, a game by Vendor Satanis. I my books are coming. I don't know when they'll be here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do have all three books uh, in PDF. And I describe it as what would happen if Dark Sun uh, if Dark Sun were being uh, were being blown by H.P. Lovecraft while Hunter S. Thompson wrote about it, because it is that wild. Oh, it is a brutal hellscape of a land. It is very post-apocalyptic. <laughs> so there was an apocalypse that happened, and these wow. like weird tentacled uh, gods and stuff are involved. There's sandworms. There's all kinds of danger, and its own mythos, That's... and it's it's very well put together. That's some and... description, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, it it is wild. And when I uh, when I first heard about it, I started looking into it, and I was like, I, I got to check it out. I, my curiosity was peaked that much. I had to check it out, and I bought the third book first by accident, and then I went back for the other two. Mm -hmm. And this when I started reading the first one, I was like, oh wow, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> I don't know, like, the, there are people that absolutely, like, it, it's because they hate, they despise Benger for some reason. It may, maybe because he's, he leans, like, way conservative, and that, that's fine. Um, I've heard rumor, I don't, I don't know if this is substantiated or not, uh, if Benger's listening, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, um, but initially he started practicing, like, Levian Satanism. Mm -hmm. He got into uh, the Necronomicon and began kind of trying to incorporate those archetypes. That was just a little, that was a bridge too far for the official COS. And they were like, we're distancing ourselves <laughs> from you. And I'm like, Cthulhu's a bridge too far for you. Uh, okay. Well, I, I can't think of a, you know, Nylar Hotep is, is, is a pretty big fucking evil. And, you know, on some level, I get it, but on the other hand, I'm like, dude, they're fictional. <laughs> they're fictional. I should know. I've read Lovecraft's work. Plenty of other people have contributed. They built a mythos yeah. together, and someone decided to write the Necronomicon. It's not a real thing. It's fine. You're going to be okay. But anyway, he incorporates some of that, like, eldritch horror into his game, and I love that kind of that kind of motif so i was like mm -hmm. yeah you know uh last week uh when he talked about having hard covers i was like hey i'm i'm interested what do you got and he told me i was like 
how do I pay you? I want those <laughs> books. So I paid him. I'm just waiting on the books to come in now. I really wish mm -hmm. I had them so I could show them off. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, well, but just that means that's more like material another, for our next podcast. The uh, next next podcast. Yeah, I mean, podcast. Dude, I'm probably gonna have like 13, 14 books. <laughs> going, oh. Dude, I'm gonna probably have to splice this podcast in two because I. <laughs> Like, dude, we, uh, I mean, I've, it's been I've over been, three hours, uh, close to four dudes. Like I, I, I scheduled the, um, the podcast for, um, 8 PM my time for four hours. Cause I was like, you know, the, no fucking we way we're gonna, no fucking way we're gonna fill four hours. Just <laughs> taking a, mile, take a ridiculous amount of time. And you oh, know, yeah. the last podcast was like two, two and a half um you know cut, yeah, we really and, cut and, and edit it and whatever um so i was like you know it's gonna be something like that well uh we're a quarter to midnight my time Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> holy crap that's so uh, that's i've big. i've got i've got even though this is a part two i've got uh enough material we've got a part for... two and a part three in here yeah, we, we I'm, do. I'm, 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 Definitely. I'm seriously thinking I'm going to have to make this a part two and a part three and just yeah. like... Yeah, we definitely got a part two like, and part three. Maybe tomorrow or, or later this uh, this week, like just uh, record a, uh, like a to be continued outro <laughs> uh, <laughs> and just like f find a spot somewhere around the like two, two and a half hour mark that I can just... Uh, cut it and be like ladies and gentlemen to be continued because this is a long ass fucking podcast well I, I can i can close out with this so like let me let me close this out uh so um one of the things that we're, we talked about before and this is this is one of the things i wanted to bring up and i completely spaced on it uh the the not having all the <laughs> you know constant politics in your game yeah um that that's been one of the chief complaints of many people that I hang around is there are these people they think everything has to be political. Well, we disagree. Not everything has to be political. The good yeah. news is, um, if Wizards of the Coast or other companies insist on shoehorning the this stuff into everything that we were supposed to buy from them, yeah. my my solution i spent an entire day arguing with these people i burned down the battery on my phone and i realized i just wasted the entire day doing that i was yeah. i was like i was really actually kind of ashamed of myself i was like you know you, dude you're better did you than mention this. that in one of your uh one of your readings one of your i did yeah i, I yeah. definitely mentioned it because i was like there, there's a whole lot in those readings that really kind of said hey dude <laughs> son of a bitch so i was like yeah okay okay i i did that so it was right then i was like i need to come up with something better and the better thing i came up with was okay it's it's my pin tweet on twitter if you go to my link tree which i, th I think you've still got that if not i'll provide it again yeah go to my no, link tree I've, i have everything and I can, I can just copy paste it from the last one sweet <laughs> okay so you go to my link tree you go to my twitter it's going to be the i actually pinned this tweet so Here's my, here's my solution to the whole thing. Okay, number one, buy from independent creators because guess what? Self-publishing, it's a thing these days. Yeah. The, that genie's out of the bottle. The woke can't put it back together. They can't put it back in. If, you know, they're not if anything, it's place. easier than ever. It's easier than ever, exactly. Back in the day, if you wanted to uh, compose something you had to compose it you had to send it off to tsr tsr then had to, or palladium they would have to approve it then it would undergo an editing process and it still might get rejected so the adventure you created for dungeons and dragons might not show up and even and when it, that was a it, very long process yeah and even if it was and, put out it's not the same product that you brought in uh, Maybe, maybe not. I'm, I'm sure that the TSR, I'm sure, would like either call or send a letter and mm -hmm. there'd be correspondence at least. But if if the blue haired crowd had tried this back in the 90s, they'd have won. Especially if they got the TSR on their side, they would have won. This thing yeah. would have been over. A whole lot of role players would have been like, 
no, nah, I'm out. But now they can't. It, it's, it, it's a losing ground. They're in a quagmire. And we have, and I'm going to submit this first, and I'll show you proof that it works. So the first thing that happens is every time you are scolded or every time you fail one of their purity tests, you just purchase something else, something that speaks to you, something that resonates with you, play whatever you want. It doesn't have to be old school. It can be something independent. If you mm -hmm. like an independent cyberpunk game, go ahead and purchase it. I even say, yes, PDFs count. You can use those, especially if storage and space is a concern. Hey, guess what? I probably got more PDFs than I do physical copies. <laughs> you can buy PDFs. You can buy the actual books. Uh, I would say try to do that when necessary or when, when, when you can. Yeah. Don't break your bank. Just vote with your wallet. It's probably going to take a while, but here's proof that it works. Netflix and EA Sports. They have already reversed course yeah. on their political statements. They have actually, uh, Netflix actually fired a lot of their woke workers because they had to make up jobs for them. And now that things are taking that downhill turn, they're like, well, we backed the wrong horse. If, if you have to buy something from Wizards of the Coast, I recommend buying their old school stuff. Ignore that stupid print lecture. Just buy what you love, stick with it, stay that course. And I guarantee you, eventually, some somewhere, something's going to happen where they're going to be like, yeah, maybe this isn't such a smart idea. And once you do it, just keep it up because they're going to see where the real money is. That's where they're going to go. At the yeah. end of the day, they are all businesses and businesses must make that bottom line to survive. So it's not boycott this, boycott that. I'm saying vote with your wallet, buy what you love, you know. If it if that's the kind of thing you enjoy, fine, cool. But if you're going to lecture me, I'm probably going to be buying some OSR product, and I'm really going to piss you off. So that that to me was more of a solution because it drives it drives them absolutely crazy. There's nothing they yeah. can do about what I purchase. I mean, I've had people buy it, get mad at me over owning Mifarog, and I'm like, dude, I don't even play it. I've got tons of criticisms with it. What? Why are you mad? Oh, Bar got that little bit of money out of me oh i don't care so it's not uh, gonna you, matter that much anyway right and you've you've met victor victor is uh yeah victor is coming up with a uh, 5e supplement that you can set in modern day so it'll have modern weapons and things like that he's also writing uh waste runners for as uh as a take on cow punchers set in a post-apocalyptic future I can't wait for that to come out. I got to see that. Um, Greg Lambert, again, shout out for Chronicles of Iris and um, the Doom that came to Astrius, which should be coming. Uh, I don't know how soon, but should be coming. I mean, that, that project was funded. It works. Uh, Vendor Satanus, I love Chalt as a setting. I think, it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's worth checking out. If you check it out in PDF, find out it's not for you, don't worry about it. It's just fine. Um, Shit, who else? I, I'm John Torres, Cal Punchers. Uh, he's working on some other stuff. He's actually gotten a supplement and a system reference document out. That's free, by the way. So oh, go check cool. that out. Just tons of independent creators. And if you if you just don't know who else to follow, you know, if, if you uh, need any other suggestions, talk to me on Twitter, talk to me on Minds, talk to me on MeWe and uh, Cloud Hub and all those other places. Telegram um, in the tribe. Telegram in the tribe, uh, signal if you have my number. <laughs> any yeah. any of those places, you can definitely come talk to me. I'll be more than happy to you know set you on the right path here. I'll uh, put your link tree in the in the description together with um, at least your uh, your minds and your Twitter, the um, the two Sweet. bigger platforms. Um, <laughs> is there? Anything else you uh, you want to wrap it up with, or are we uh, we leaving it at I, this? Cause... I think we're good. I think we're good right now. Uh, awesome. Like I said, I've got those I've got those books coming in. I've got Mutant Crawl Classics coming in. Um, by the t by the time we get, I, I think if, even if we did this next weekend, um, I will probably still have like 
a bunch of books that just came in. I'll probably have like se- at least seven books to just talk about. And we'll oh, we'll dude, wrap about I, them. I love doing another uh, another podcast. Uh, it's gonna be uh, part four because I'm I'm definitely gonna have to, yeah, to this... cut cut this up in two, which is which is fine. You know, just um, I am probably gonna. We lost all track of time over here. Basically, uh, I am gonna release them separately um just to not overwhelm people like space it out a bit um uh, but... i do want to i do want to do one more shout out uh to one of the nicest guys who loves dragon lance on twitter yo dano i gotta shout that dude out he is one of the like he will talk to anybody and he will he will happen if you don't know anything about dragon lance He'll completely he'll completely nerd out if you let him. And guess what? <laughs> nice. He is actually from where I'm living right now. Oh, and cool. We just kind of found that out. Small world. But uh yeah, definitely check check out at Yo Dano on uh Twitter. He is a the the guy is like just you know, million dollar heart, love him to death. And I think he's even he's even kind of had an interest in the mutant crawl classics game that I'm thinking about putting together just for giggles. And uh, yeah, guess what? You're invited too. So oh. uh, I got you and Moots uh, kind of uh, all, all you, both of you guys are invited since we, uh, since our BFRPG group kind of fell apart. Uh, <laughs> five, five out of seven just couldn't make it. And I'm like, oh, oh that sucks. But well, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to be there next time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool because uh, we still have those characters built. We can still play that, but yeah, check that guy yeah. out on uh, Twitter. I think you're going to love him to death. I, I know I do. He's awesome. Awesome. Sounds sounds like a lot of fun. So uh, then I'm going to wrap it up here. This was um, Stein Fox, Jarl of Grey or Pagans with Raven Wolfgar uh, on four hours of Dungeons and Dragons, close to four hours, let's say three and a half. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role playing. Um, you can find Raven on Twitter and Minds and everything else you just mentioned. I'll leave everything in the description below. You can find me on Telegram, t.me slash Steinfox. You can find me on Minds under the same name. I am now also on Twitter. Yes, I gave in. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. Uh, Join us. <laughs> oh God, it's a shit show. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's twitter.com slash Steinfox. You can find the Greyhorn Pagans on Telegram at t.me slash Greyhorn Pagans. You can find us on Minds uh, at Greyhorn Pagans. Um, we have a Odyssey channel on which I will upload both the, um, the videos for the podcast as i said i'm gonna have to splice them in two and don't be scared to uh to drop a donation at uh ko-fi.com slash grayhorn pagans everything you can um everything you can miss everything you can donate to us will go to um to a good cause to further the tribe and our mission and with all of that done i'm signing off stein fox Signing off, Raven. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all have a a good day, a good night, whatever it is for you. See you Wherever later. Wherever you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See you later, people.